Yeah, I wanted to, to ask you about um, yours and Mark's um, you know, childhood and if you, there were any particular sort of things that, uh, that you both enjoyed as children. Well, it's, um, we were brought up in Hackney in East London and um, it's very hard to think back because uh, in, in our little family as we were, we had a really nice childhood and uh, there's nothing that would stand out to, to, for me to be able to say that that was a good time because f from our childhood memories, I think both of us, if Mark was here now, he'd say the same thing, that there's nothing that would stand out. We used to in uh, we used to live near a big common, we used to enjoy the normal kids games and around with the kids in the area. It was uh, it was just a, a good time in our lives. Yeah, I, I visited the house where you where you lived when when you were children. It faces onto the common, mm. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. We used to live on the the top floor. There were three families in that house. Yeah, they were just on. We used to live on the top. It's, uh, so it was a nice area, as such, because we had some good friends around there. So that meant um, you and Mark shared a bedroom then? Yeah, yeah. Um, our bedroom was actually the front room, because all, all we had was a kitchen, mum and dad's bedroom, and a very large front room what it used to call the front room, which now would be a lounge, but in there we used to have our two beds as well and that was our that was our area. But it was a, a very old house. In the winter if you wanted to warm it up you had to light the fire three days before you wanted to use the room. It was a really cold place but um it was a good good life there. We we used to have a good family life. And then of course the, the, the school you went to was only um, just around the corner as yeah, well. Yeah, Northall Road was uh, just up the road and we both see our infant and junior years there. And then we moved on up to, uh, it was just in Albion Road near Islington, William Wordsworth. I don't know whether that's still there or they might have changed the name. But it used to be Albion Road. But um, seeing I was two years older than Mark, we never ever saw each other at school because we were in different parts of the school. So school-wise, didn't come into it because uh, the time we I'd let I was leaving, he wouldn't be coming to the big school till then. It was, there was an annex and a, a main building. Did uh, Mark show any um, early signs uh, of picking music up uh, when he was at school? Well, most of the time he was a rebel, but um, the music side of it started to blossom when he was about nine, when he used to follow the, uh, the old boy programs that they used to record at the Hackney Empire it was close to us so he could get in there and uh, that's, where, that's where he got most of his uh, show business ideas from. He'd uh, mix with all the, the stars of the time and uh, pick their brains but store it all up for when he matured and when he wanted to go into the business he had a, a foot in to work on. He, he was shrewd that way, although he was only young, he was picking it all up. And from nine, that's all he wanted to do. He knew what he was going to do, and that was his target. Um, so how did, the, how did the move to Wimbledon affect his life? Well, we, we were always... Uh, more grown up than our years so although we moved from one side of London to the other we always 
got on the tube and went back to our roots where our friends were. We, I don't think Mark made many friends when he was at school, when he was at school. <laughs> he didn't like school then. And uh, by that time, I was at work and uh, my friends were in South uh, West London. So I would just go over to them. But it was, it was a nice place to live. Again, it was a nice place to live because it was, it was totally different to the environment we've been brought up in. It was new, it was modern for the day. So uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it there, but we still kept our old circle of friends. So how much, how aware were you of, um, you know, when he, when he started sort of um, cutting the first records as a, as a solo artist? Well, I, I just used to get it through the grapevine, if you want to put it that way, because yeah. uh, by that time I was married and I was living away. So it was just, we only ever met when we both went to mum and dad's. And, but, um, I used to keep abreast what was happening through the, the first TV programmes he did and things like that. But it was only when we met, all through his pop life, we, it was hard to arrange, because he didn't know where he was going to be, I didn't know where I'd be. So we, we used to meet a few times a year, but it, it was never ever a regular thing. And so, what what was his his reaction to getting to number one? He, he was over the moon. That that was his target. He, he knew he was going to get there. If he said, well, he wouldn't didn't know how long, but every time he was knocked down, or he'd get up again and either change managers or change something to get on and another step up the ladder. And th this is where he's, uh, the, all the information he picked up over the years stood him in good stead. What was, uh, what was your parents' reaction to, to him sort of oh, getting yeah. to number one and being on top of the pops? They were as proud as punch. They, they, they supported him right up until he he got into the business, so it was like a reward to them. But yeah. they'd pushed him on, and uh, at the end, that was the uh, the final result. And so, what what was it like for you having such a famous brother? Well, I was never in anything to do with show business. And uh, I never ever thought it was it was to my advantage. So there's only a few of my friends knew who Mark was, and uh, I think the first time that a large amount of people knew that Mark was my brother was when Mark got killed. It was in the papers, but other than that, I'd, I I didn't find any uh, advantage in that. Uh, Oh no, no, but I mean you, you didn't use it. You, I would never use it. Oh no, no, but but oh, some people but did. you didn't but you didn't get um, you know, sort of people you know, fans knocking on no, the door. No, 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 because they, nobody they discovered knew, it. knew me at all. It was only till nineteen seventy seven. You managed to keep that very quiet at yeah, the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was his trumpet so he could blow it. Yeah. But uh, your your parents People discovered where your where your parents lived at the time, did they? Yeah, well, it's in the local area. Yeah, they used to when when Mark moved to the the house, and he used to go over to my mum and dad's. He'd pedal over on his little fold up bike incognito, and all the kids would stand on the corner waving to him because everybody knew who he was. So it, it was. Uh, so he wasn't that incognito. Oh then. no, <laughs> but. He's, uh, nobody ever bothered me, mum and dad, and that they were never, if, if fans come round, they'd always be welcome. 
Mm. You know, there, there's some fans I think they could back that up. <laughs> so they were always made welcome. Yeah, well, I, I knew your parents after your brother died. Oh. Yes, I can definitely back mm -hmm. that up. If Mark hadn't died and was, was still here now, what do you think he'd he'd be doing, or what do you think he would like to have been doing? Well, this is only some, I'm only surmising, but he was looking at going into business, films, music, and things like that. Yeah. And maybe cut down the singing a bit. I don't think he'd be like. Mick Jagger or Dave Bowie singing all the time. Yeah. I, th I, th I think he'd have uh, diversed his money and uh, made it work for him that way. Because it is a hard life. So I, I think he's settled down and gone into business. And especially, of course, with, with Roland mm -hmm. arriving in, in 75. Yeah, well, that, that changed his life again, that stabilised him. Because before he ran in a bit wild, but when Road arrived, that was it. It's, that was another one of his targets. And uh, I think it made him grow up a lot. And uh, as I say, everything blended in. The, the, the only upheavals in my life have been when Mark died and my mum and dad died. The, the big upheavals. Mm. I can remember them better than the good times. I remember the good times with mum and dad and Mark, but they're the things that stick in your mind. All the good times just is a nice golden haze, but yeah. my memory won't allow me to go back that far. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks. That's okay. Hope it's worth it, hope you can use some of it.